So section 1.3 is vectors. And from one point of view, a vector is just a special kind of matrix. It's a matrix with one row or one column. So a matrix that looks like this or a matrix that looks like that. And uh, very naturally, if it's just a row, it's called a row vector. And if it's just a column, it's called a column vector. And in this class, we are going to work almost exclusively with column vectors. I mean, I think it's fair to say in mathematics, we work almost exclusively with column vectors. The only setting I can think of where row vectors are frequently used are certain types of probability. So just for convenience, from now on when I say vector, I mean a column vector. Column vectors, as I say, are in one sense just a type of matrix. It usually is going to make more sense to think of them as being kind of their own thing. Because the things you do to and with column vectors are pretty fundamentally different than the things you do to and with other types of matrices. You would never perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on a column vector, for example. There would never be a reason to do that. So sort of matrices, but we'll also kind of think of them as being their own thing. Because we kind of think of them as being their own thing, they get their own notation. N, N by one matrix. That is to say, a column vector. This is a matrix with only one uh, column, is called a vector in R n. This is maybe familiar notation. Maybe not. I'm not sure where you'd first see it. Um, so that sort of script R represents the real numbers. It's telling us that we're looking at vectors and matrices with real entries. And that's going to be true for almost this entire course. I think there's one section where we look at a little complex number stuff, but for the most part, everything's going to be real. Uh, in textbooks and so on, where you can easily change your typing format, Vectors are usually represented by lowercase bold letters from towards the end of the alphabet. So, I mean, V for vector.
Richter, and then if we need another letter, we use W or U traditionally. Obviously, you just saw it would be kind of a pain to do that on the whiteboard every time. So we have an alternative bit of notation, which is a, a letter with a little arrow above it. And I have to admit, sometimes I get a little sloppy and Instead of writing the arrow, I just write the horizontal line segment. That's common too, though. I call it me being sloppy, but it's something you see a lot. So, vectors, in spite of being, I mean, lists of numbers, essentially, but vectors have a lot of familiar properties, so natural that it might not even make, uh, that it might not make sense to spend a lot of time dwelling on them. But like two vectors can be equal to each other. That's a property that numbers have, but it's a property that vectors have too. And I, maybe I should say something about this. I mean, two vectors are equal if they're the same size and have the same entries in the same order. So this is a true statement, but if I look at these same numbers, one, two, three, and I put the two and the three in different orders, that breaks this equality. We can add vectors to one another as long as they're the same size, the same dimension. And addition is done component-wise, which is just a fancy way of saying First, we add the first numbers, then we add the second numbers, then we add the third numbers. So there's an example of vector addition. Um, and because vectors can be added, and because vectors can be equal to each other, we can have equations involving vectors. We'll talk about that probably, probably Thursday. For now, there are two sort of operations we can perform on vectors. You've seen one of them, we can add them. And, and this doesn't have any, any special name, addition is addition. The next thing we can do with vectors is, if you haven't seen this before, it's sort of different from from the types of operations we're used to. This does have a special name. It's called scalar multiplication. And what makes it different from multiplications we're used to is that we're used to multiplying objects of the same type. 
You can multiply two real numbers together, or you can multiply two complex numbers together, or you can multiply two functions together. Here, we're, as I say, we're multiplying objects of different types. A scalar multiplication is a number times a vector. And the result is a vector. And just doing this via example, 2 times the vector 1, 7, negative 3. We take all of the numbers in that list, all of the entries in the vector, and we multiply them by 2. 2, 14, negative 6. So that's addition, and that's scalar multiplication, and these are the the two properties that we have with vectors. If you've seen this before, I mean, if you're thinking of dot products or cross products or whatever, put that out of your mind. We'll come back to that towards the end of the class. For now, we'll just talk about these two operations. And now I'm going to put a list on the whiteboard, a list of properties. And if you just look at this list and you think of it as a list of things you have to memorize, it's going to be pretty overwhelming. Instead, we should focus on the take-home message of the list which is that addition and multiplication and subtraction act the way you are used to addition and multiplication working. So, we're used to addition being commutative. When we add numbers, the order doesn't matter. And that's true for vector addition as well. We're used to addition being associative. If we've got three things and we're adding them together, we can throw parentheses in wherever. That's a property of real addition. It's a property that vectors have as well. Addition by zero doesn't do anything. With vectors, we'll define a zero vector, and addition by the zero vector doesn't do anything, and this zero vector is just the vector of all zeros. With addition, we can use addition to define subtract. We can think of 5 minus 7 to be 5 plus negative 7. Um, I mentioned the word subtraction earlier. It's what's, what number am I at? I'm at number 4. We can take a negative of a vector because we have scaled our multiplication. If we want to talk about negative u, we can take negative 1 times u. 
So just like we call negative 1 times 5, negative 5, we'll call negative 1 times a vector, negative that vector. And if we take a vector and it's negative, and we put them together, we get to zero. Every vector has an additive inverse, would be the fancy way of saying that. Multiplication, we're used to multiplication, distributing over addition. This scalar multiplication does distribute over addition. And if instead of adding two vectors, we're adding two scalars, well, still. Multiplication distributes over addition. Uh, when we're working with real numbers, Multiplication is associative. You move, can move parentheses around. Uh, so we have something like that. If we've got a vector and we've got multiple scalars, we can move those parentheses around. Finally, multiplication by one doesn't change a number. Multiplication by one similarly doesn't change a vector. So this list is important. I mean, at some point down the line, in chapter four, as I recall, this list is going to turn into a definition. We're going to say, you know, that if we have multiplication and addition, and they satisfy all of these properties, then we've got a special kind of object, and we'll give it its own name and study it. Um, but for now, as I say, I think of this thus as a thing to be committed to memory, entry by entry, and more I think of it in terms of its sort of big picture view, which is that addition acts how we expect it to act. Multiplication acts how we expect it to act. We think we should be able to distribute multiplication over addition. We can. We think multiplication by one shouldn't change anything. It doesn't. So it's this new definition, but it behaves in a very familiar way. Let me end, well, Actually, this is probably a pretty natural place to end. We haven't quite finished 1.3, but I'm feeling good about finishing 1.3 and 1.4 tomorrow and being on this remaining on the schedule that Canvas has set up. I think we'll probably do that.